Good morning, family and friends of the House of Refuge Church. We would like to take this time to honor our 2020 graduates. On behalf of Pastor David E. Hardy, First Lady Melissa Hardy, and the entire church family, we would like to congratulate you all on your graduation. We are so proud of each of you. Please know that we love you, we're praying for you, and we cannot wait to see what the future holds for each of you. Good morning and welcome to the House of Refuge Church virtual broadcast. I'm so excited about what God has in store for us today. I want you to join us in worship. Uh, we have an amazing uh, music ministry uh, that's coming to you with the word through song. Uh, and We want you to be blessed by uh, the singing. Join in, clap your hands, raise your hands, sing along with us as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So after this music ministry has come and they've given you uh, the Word of God through song, I'll come back and I'll be ready to share with you the Word of God uh, as it relates to what He has given us today uh, that will help us in order for us to live a life that's pleasing in His sight. And not only a life that's pleasing in His sight, but a life that is blessed by God. Join in, tune in, sing along, pray along, be encouraged as we hear the House of Refuge Church Music Ministry. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah, wherever you are, in your home, in your car, come on, bless the Lord. If you know he's been good, or you have a reason to praise him, if you know he's been a keeper, you know he's been a provider, for you all to bless the Lord with everything you have. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall forever be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Yahweh, we praise you.
sing it one more time. All the glory belongs to you, God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Come on, I need you to give God some praise wherever you are. If you know the glory belongs to God. All the power belongs to God. It's because of His strength that we're able to move and live and have our being. God, will we give you all the glory?
begin to lift your hands right where you are. Don't worry about who's around you. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Come on, lift your hands and give God some praise. See, I know you're watching us, but you can praise God for yourself. Somebody say, I know it for myself that God is good. I know him to be a healer. I know him to be a keeper. I know him to be a deliverer. Oh, he's an excellent God. God to move in us. Sometimes we just have to pause and get in his presence and allow him to work through us. Sometimes we can forget things to be going good and we can forget we still need him. I don't know about you, but it doesn't matter how high I get. It doesn't matter how much money I make. I still need God. I still need him. Cause we're just a heartbeat from having a heart attack in here. So we still need him every day, every hour. When we leave this place, we need him. On our job, we need him. In our house, we need him. In the church, we need him. So we gotta have him. Oh, we gotta have him. We gotta have you, God. We gotta have you, God. Oh, we need Oh, we need you guys. Oh. 
my goodness, how excellent is the name of our God. We were blessed, truly blessed. I know I was by that particular song. How excellent is his name and all of his majesty and all of his greatness. God is so worthy and awesome to be praised. And guess what? He did go to Calvary to die for you and me. I want to share with you the word of God and as we get ready to go into the word of God, I want you to uh, turn to Matthew chapter 6, a very familiar passage of scripture there in the 33rd verse, uh, Matthew chapter 6 uh, and verse 33. And we're going to share the word of God this morning. Um, we're thankful and grateful uh, that on a day that we celebrate uh, our independence of uh, the 4th of July, uh, it, I'm also grateful that I celebrate every day the fact that I am independent. The devil has no shackles, no chains, no bounds on me, but I am free by Christ Jesus. I want to share with you Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Um, let's have a word of prayer and dive into the word of God. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We bless you for all that you have done. Lord, we thank you for every way that you've done it. The good, the bad, we thank you for it all, oh God. We pray now, Lord God, that you would speak to us, speak to our situations, our circumstances, our spirits, oh God, that we may be strengthened, that we may be helped, that we may be delivered. We thank you for this visitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Look with me, if you will, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Uh, we're going to hear what the Lord has to say to us on today. It reads on this wise, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these other things shall be added unto you. Verse 34 and last says, take therefore no thought for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I want to talk to you just for a brief moment and from this particular thought, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Jesus is so awesome in all that he does. He is, in fact, a master teacher and he teaches his disciples and in this particular chapter, he wants to teach them about how he will take care of them. And he leaves this on record for all of believers, you and I alike, that uh, if we trust God and we depend on him and take care of his business, then God will take care of our business. It is for the believer to understand and to recognize uh, that God uh, is a provider. Jesus teaches this about our God and shares with the disciples uh, that God uh, will take care of you if, in fact, you are his child. He tells them by opening it up in chapter 6, he says, Take no heed uh, that you do your alms before men. He says, uh, but when you do your alms before men, you have your reward already. And so what Jesus is teaching them as he opens up chapter 6 is he's teaching them uh, that you don't go around to impress people, uh, but the only impression you need to leave uh, is the one uh, that you have with God. For the Bible shares with us uh, that uh, all that we do in word or deed ought to be done unto the Lord. So he shares with them that there are no big eyes and little U's. Uh, he says, but everybody is on the same playing field. And as he says that to them, he transitions uh, and shares with them about prayer. He says, when you pray, don't do as the hypocrites do. Get on the street corners and pray out loud to be seen of men. But he says to them, when you pray, enter into your secret closet. And he says, the God that seeth in secret will reward you openly. And I thank God for that because there are some prayers that I cannot pay, play, pray in public. 
But there are prayers that I have to pray that have to be just me and God alone. And I thank God that God uh, knows uh, how to hear and answer secret prayer. That I don't have to put on a show or be in front of anybody to get God to move for me. But just to have a personal relationship with him through prayer means uh, that God uh, will hear and answer those prayers. He goes on to tell them in Matthew chapter 6, he says, I want you to understand uh, that prayers are not only for you and you to God, but also you need to pray for your brother and your sister. He says it like this. He says to them as he's teaching them what is called the model prayer, he lets them know, Lord, forgive me, but also forgive those that have debts or alts against me. He shares with them that yes, you can talk to him, but you ought to be talking to him for somebody else. And I want to pause right there and share that I thank God for the people who prayed for me because I wouldn't be standing up here if it had not been for a praying mother, a praying grandmother, a praying grandfather, a praying father, a praying brother, a praying, so you know where I'm going, and somebody can testify that you wouldn't be where you are right now if it had not been for somebody who was praying for you. He shares with them uh, that uh, not only do you have to pray to God, but you also have to pray to others. Uh, but then he tells them about stuff, and that's what I like to call it, cars, houses, and all of these different things uh, that people work one, two, and three jobs for. There is nothing wrong with having nice stuff, but Jesus says to them, uh, don't lay up treasures uh, where moth and rust doth corrupt. In other words, he tells them uh, that your focus ought not be on getting stuff, uh, but your focus ought to be on uh, getting closer to God. He says that new car that you buy, it's going to depreciate. He said those clothes are going to go out of style. He says uh, that if you eat at a table like I do, you're going to gain weight and stuff that fit ain't going to fit no more. Basically what he tells them is don't put all of your energy into trying to look nice, drive nice, live nice. All of those things are wonderful, uh, but he says all of those things uh, are subservient to the fact uh, that you ought to be a child of God and on a mission for God uh, as we live this life. Uh, he also tells them, he tells them, he says, I want you to understand this. Uh, he says, no man can serve uh, two masters. Uh, he said, you'll either love the one uh, or you'll hate the other. He he said there's no straddling the fence either you're all for me or you're not for me he says no man can serve two masters and then he teaches them something he tells them that God knows what you need so when he talks to them he says I want you to understand this and this is in verse number 25 he says therefore take no thought Take no thought for your life or what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor for your body what you shall put on. Not, not, is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? He shares with them uh, that don't, don't worry about those things uh, because God will uh, take care of you. He says don't, don't take thought. Don't worry about those things uh, because God uh, will provide those things uh, if you are doing uh, what he has called uh, you to do. Now let me share with you your call may not be up behind a pulpit, may not be behind a mic singing, but all of us have a call and a purpose on our lives. Uh, and so the person that you meet in Walmart that you need to share the word of God with or encourage, that's your purpose. He says go about not trying to figure out how you 
you're going to be the best and the biggest and the baddest, but really he says you ought to focus on every day trying to meet somebody who, can, who you can encourage or they can encourage you. He goes on to share with them, he says, I want you to understand that the lilies of the field, they, they, they don't do anything to be arrayed as pretty as they are because God takes care of them. And so he shares with them and builds them uh, to this climactic point to where he's teaching them uh, that God will uh, take care of them. He says, you've got to understand this now. So he goes into uh, verse number 33. And as he goes into verse number 33, he wants to share with them, uh, God will take care of you because God has uh, a purpose for your life. Now, I need you to understand this. This is interesting because in verse number 33, it says, but seek ye first the king kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, but, but, but watch this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. He says, I have a purpose for your life. Uh, and he says uh, that if you can get stuff out of the way, people out of the way, things out of the way, then I can add to your life. Let me see if I can break it down for you. He says it's addition by subtraction. See, the less of the world you get, the more of God you're going to get. And so really what he really says to us is, is that when we get all of the clutter out the way, then he can give us those good and wonderful gifts. He says, listen, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he said, I will add all of these things uh, unto you. And I don't know about you, but God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And God says uh, that I will add uh, to your life. I got a purpose for you being here. And that is not to destroy you, but I've come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. God uh, wants to add to your life. Uh, he wants to give you more. He wants to do more with you. And I may be somebody out here that I'm talking to and I want you to understand this the reason that you're not satisfied and you're agitated where you are is because God has a purpose that's greater than where you are and it's okay if it seems bigger than you greater than you larger than you because God wants you to depend on him uh, so that he can show you and move you into your purpose as it relates to his call uh, for your life he says listen I want you you to seek him first he says I want you to seek him first uh, now watch this watch this watch this watch this he says seek the Lord seek the Lord his kingdom and his righteousness he says seek to do things my way my purpose in life is to do things God's way and when you do things God's way you'll be surprised that God will take care of you Listen, he not only says that he'll take care of you because he has a purpose for your life, but also he'll take care of you because he provides for your life. Look, look at what it says there. Look at what it says. He says, add. We talked about addition for subtraction, but when you look up add in the Greek, it simply means to place something at the disposal of someone. It means to make available or to give access. Yeah, that, that, that's what it means. It, it means uh, that God puts stuff in your path uh, that as you're going, everything that you need uh, is already laid out for you. Oh, God. God, that made me happy right there. See, because when I run up against stuff that I can't handle on my own, knowing that God will take care of me because he'll provide for me, means that he'll add everything to my life uh, that I need. He'll put it at my disposal. He'll put it in a place where I can receive it. I wonder if there's anybody out there, and I know I can't hear you, but I wish I could. If there was anybody out there that somehow, some way, God can 
kept opening doors, making ways out of no ways. God uh, made people uh, that were trying to come against you behave and had people that didn't like you help you. I, I wish I had somebody that could talk to me uh, because God has a way of manipulating situations and circumstances so that everything works together for our good. And I'm so glad that God has provided for me. Listen, I, I just got to check, turn the page real quick because I'm not talking about only providing cars and houses. I'm not only talking about providing money. I'm not only talking about those things that God does, that he does provide, but I'm talking about joy in the time of sorrow. I'm talking about peace in the midst of a storm. I'm talking about putting a smile on my face when I feel like crying. I'm talking about God is a provider. He let me breathe in and out without contacting COVID-19. He let me make it from here to there without being in a car wreck. He provided for me. He covered me. He sheltered me. He helped me. God, oh God, I feel this thing. It, it's amazing what God provides uh, for us. He says, I'm going to take care of you. I got you. You don't have to worry about anything. He says, first of all, because I have a purpose for your life. But then he says, because I provide for your life. But then thirdly, he says this. He says, I'm going to take care of you because I have a plan for your life. Ah, I love it. Look, look at what he says. He says, take no thought, verse number 34, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He says, I got a, I got a plan for your life. Don't take thought for the morrow. Don't, don't take, don't take Thought for the, the morrow. Let, let me just share with you what thought is in the Greek. It simply means this. It, it means to have worry, anxiety about an impending danger or misfortune. To have worry or anxiety about an impending danger or misfortune. Look at what he says. Take no thought. Take, the, take therefore no thought. Don't worry about misfortune or anxiety or impending danger because I've already taken care of that. <laughs> I've already planned your life. I already know what's going to happen. I know how it's going to happen. I already know who's going to do it to you. I know why they're going to do it to you. And all things work together for the good of them that love God and called according to his purpose. Can I share something with you that God has a plan for your life? He has a plan for your life and I love the plan uh, that he has for my life listen at what Jeremiah says chapter 29 verse 11 he says for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you unexpected end he says I've already planned from birth to the grave as a matter of fact I knew you while you were already in your mama's belly he says I got you taken care of because I've got a plan for your life now let me share with you what has to happen is you have to relinquish your plan and accept God's plan oh my God I hear the psalmist screaming at me saying order my steps in your word dear Lord Lord. In other words, God, I don't want to take a step without you. I don't want to make a move without you. I don't want to make a decision without you, oh God. I need you to lead me and to guide me every step of the way because you have a plan for my life. And let me share with somebody real quickly. It seems like life is messing up. Seems like things are not going right. Seems like you keep running into a dead end after a dead end. Let me share with you. That's because you have not sought God first. And if you seek him first, God will order your step. I wish I could hear y'all holler back at me real quick. I know that there's somebody out there who can testify that God has ordered my steps. Yes, I made it this far because God was leading me and guiding me the entire way. It's awesome. It's awesome. He says, I want to share with you, God will take care of you because he has a purpose for your life, because he provides for your life. But not only that, because he has a plan for your life. But lastly, let me tell you this real quickly. He wants you to prioritize your life. He says, I'll take care of you if you prioritize your 
life. He says, listen, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Uh, let, let me see if I can. Uh, he says, <clears throat> don't worry about what could happen. You got to be more concerned about what is happening. <laughs> okay. He, he says like, we, we, we have to decide whether we are going to work for God or we're going to worry. We have to decide whether or not we're going to whine about our life or we're going to witness for God. We have to decide whether or not we're going to have a pity party or a praise party. We, we, we're going to have to decide whether or not we're going to pout or whether we're going to pray. We have to decide whether we're going to grumble or whether we're going to give God the glory. He says you got to prioritize. He says you got to put your feelings aside and make sure that you keep the main thing the main thing. That, that's what he says. He says you got to make sure that you're not worried, concerned, or thinking about tomorrow because I got too much for you to do today. He says I woke you up this morning and the last that I checked the psalmist said this is a day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice uh, and be glad in it. I can't cry about what might happen but I sure can cry out to God and give him praises for what is happening. I, I, I need somebody to understand this. God says uh, I want to be first in your life uh, and being first in your life means uh, that you're not worried about stuff that might happen on tomorrow or down the road uh, or tonight but he says this morning right here when I rose, uh, I didn't have no doubt that the Lord had brought me out, that he gave me another day. And even if he gave me a day where it's raining in my life, that's all right. He says I'm a shelter in the time of storm. If he gave me a day where the sun uh, of persecution is beating down on me, he'll say, I'll do you like I did the children of Israel. I give you a cloud, a pillar by day to shelter you from the sun and a cloud, a pillar of fire to keep you warm at night. He says, I got you covered. I'll take care of you. There is nothing that the enemy can do to you that will cause you to fail or to fund. He says, I got you in my hands. I will take care of you. And God bless Matthew for recording the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 6 because it let me know God will take care of me. I'm not worried about what tomorrow may bring. I'm not worried about what the enemy may try to do to me. God will take care of me. How do I know? I'm glad you asked because he has a purpose for your life. Because he will provide for you. Because he has a plan for your life. But wait, because he wants me to prioritize. How does he get me there? I'm glad you asked. This is how it gets me there. When I look back over my life and the stuff that I used to worry about, I don't worry about no more. Why? Because all of my worrying did me no good. God still brought me out all right. And I want to tell you, God's got you. He's got you covered. Take up heart today. Strengthen yourself. Hold your head up. Be encouraged. God will take care of you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, if you're not saved, I want you to be saved. I'm going to share that prayer with you. Just pray this prayer where you are, God. I'm a sinner. And I pray <clears throat> that you will forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ hung, bled, died, rose, and reigns. And I pray that he would take up regency in my life. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says all you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Listen, thank you so much for sharing with us. To our members and friends, we miss you so very, very much. I was anxious and hopeful that we would get back into the sanctuary, but it just has not turned out that way. But I want to tell you, we love you. We miss you. We long to have fellowship with you. Until then, continue to pray, continue to support our ministry, continue to view, continue to like, continue to share. 
continue to do what we're doing because we are getting the word out. We are the House of Refuge Church where we are redeeming, restoring, reviving, and reaching. God bless you until next time. We also want to give you an opportunity uh, to give to this ministry. Uh, you can give several ways. One is by mail. Uh, you can mail your gift to the House of Refuge Church, uh, 1707 West 6th Street, Texarkana, Texas. Uh, also, uh, there are other ways to give, such as Givelify. Uh, you can download Givelify to your Apple or Android device, and you can give uh, by selecting House of Refuge Church, uh, and then also uh, Cash App. Uh, and the name is on the screen where you can give your gift by cash app. We thank you so much, so much for supporting our ministry uh, and tuning in to us. Uh, until we meet again, God bless you. May the Lord keep you. That is our prayer. He is the one that can redeem, restore, revive, and reach in your life. God bless you.